months ago, we were asked whether we would want to write a review paper for clinical microbiology and infection. And uh, of course, that's an opportunity that we didn't want to just let pass. So we sat down with the Cologne group and thought about what's a really hot topic. And a real hot topic, and it will be hot again year after year, is influenza-associated invasive aspergillosis of the lung. So we wrote a review paper and we do have that review paper accompanied by a very instructive and very well documented case. And it's primarily the work of Philip Köhler while he was on the intensive care unit as a resident. So I'm Oliver Connelly from the University of Cologne where I work as an ID consultant and we run a lot of clinical trials, develop clinical trials, that is why it's always a quite busy transparency declaration slide. And we do have a second disclaimer and that is the disclaimer from the journal and it tells you where exactly you would find that paper which is again a review plus a very instructive case and you would find videos on the case, on the CT and on the BAL on the website of CMI as supplementary material. Very interesting to, to uh, scroll through. Well, why did we choose intensive care of IAPA, so the influenza-associated pulmonary aspergillosis? Is that an important topic? We would say in Cologne, yes it is, and certainly many would agree, and there's a increasing body of evidence and literature that we do have an issue with uh, influenza uh, going along with aspergillus. Certainly severe pulmonary infections are anyway common reasons for ICU admissions, that has always been the case. But now we have that new entity of severe influenza pneumonia accompanied with or moving into ARDS uh, and um, being complicated by aspergillus infection. It's, to me, it's not exactly clear uh, what is first and what is second, but clearly it all starts with influenza. And the objective is of our review paper to provide a comprehensive review of the management of IAPA or YAPA uh, with ARDS um, in the ICU. We searched PubMed for publications from the beginning of the database all the way to January 2019 and then we did choose one of our patients who went through quite some complications that are not uncommon in these patients, so instructive and uh, should be of value for the reader. The complications were ARDS, tracheobronchitis and a tracheal stenosis and the whole case story covers half a year until we finally had a stable patient. So here you can see that the patient course over half a year really covered a lot of uh, issues and a lot of problems that we had to handle. When she was admitted to our intensive care unit then we had knowledge of influenza B pneumonia um, but she went into septic shock and on the day of admission uh, we intubated her. She was on mechanical ventilation for quite a while, went on ECMO as additional lung support or oxygenation uh, support and we found nodular infiltrates on chest CT with surrounding halo. I'll share with you the CT in a moment. And she was started on voriconazole. Once in a BAL we found aspergillus and fumigatus that was. It was a susceptible um, pathogen so that we could treat with an azole. And she stayed on the azole for quite a while. But then when she deteriorated because of a stenosis, and I'll share with you that image as well, a stenosis of the trachea, then she had to be reintubated and we did put her on a combination treatment which is really unusual for my hospital. There was voriconazole plus liposomal amphotericin B and that was done because the stenosis histologically was proven to be invasive aspergillosis from the trachea into the tissue. So uh, some details on that case. 
Here is the chest CT scan and you can see on the anatomical right or in the picture on the left side a nodular infiltrate with a surrounding halo. Here you can see, um, allow me to draw your attention to the right image first, you can see if you go closer to your computer screen or zoom in that there is tracheal stenosis even visible on the just normal chest x-ray. And on the left hand side you see the reason for the tracheal stenosis where you see that big white plaque, whitish plaque and we biopsied it and could prove that there was invasive infection. So Aspergillus hyphae from the airspace growing into the tissue. We do propose a diagnostic algorithm in that paper um, that would start with respiratory failure in a patient where you would then go for nasopharyngeal samples specifically, well depending on the time of the year, if it's influenza season that you would do that and go for either an influenza antigen test or a RT-PCR as in our case and at the same time the box on the right hand side you would go for a chest CT and see whether there are newly diagnosed changes in the lung and uh, if so um, or if the patient is intubated which will now highly likely be the case anyway in that patient uh, you would go for respiratory lower samples so for a BAL and subject that PAL fluid to the um, mycological tests that are given on the slide. And the second half of that diagnostic algorithm covers what well, it starts with beta diglucan and galactomannan testing. For us it would be a small series of GM testing. So three days for example in a row one uh, serum GM test per day and to get back more than one result rapidly and to judge whether this is increased, whether it's increased high enough so that you can establish a diagnosis of a probable fungal infection. Of course, if histology is positive, then it's proven anyway, regardless of what the other tests bring you. But if you can obtain a sample where you have proof in culture, then of course you can go for susceptibility testing which might be particularly interesting and important in areas and geographical regions where there is Aspergillus fumigatus resistance occasionally or maybe even frequently. So with that at least highly probable invasive Aspergillus case he would of course then treat Aspergillosis as we did highly likely with an azole. The treatment considerations for IAPA are as follows, there might be more, but that's the four maybe most important. So if influenza pneumonia is diagnosed, then of course no ruminidase inhibitors are indicated, don't forget about them. Um, and when you can confirm invasive aspergillosis, either to a probable or to a proven status, then you would start either isoviconazole or voriconazole for treatment. There are alternatives predominantly liposomal amphotericin B, of course, uh, but due to toxicity, we would usually use an azole uh, as the mostly A1 recommended uh, drug in various guidelines. Primary prophylaxis with posaconazole is recommended in hematological patients at risk. That is outside of this review anyway, a given and an A1 recommendation in practically all guidelines. But I have it on the slide because I want to point out that we saw a series of patients where we had neutropenia and the patients were on posaconazole or prophylaxis with adequate levels, but still due to influenza at the same time, Aspergillus broke through, so to say, IAPA broke through. And the fourth point on the slide is antifungal prophylaxis in newly diagnosed influenza with ARDS patients are now subject of current clinical trials uh, specifically in the Netherlands and Belgium, maybe in other countries uh, as well. Conclusions of influenza associated pulmonary aspergillosis and intensive care management are for that review paper as follows. IAPA may develop in ARDS patients that are otherwise not at risk for aspergillus pneumonia, just influenza puts them at risk. 
Um, tracheobronchitis and aspergillus in respiratory samples, either one, should really prompt suspicion of invasive pulmonary aspergillosis and usually would need biopsy and all the tests you can do at the same time and run them all so that you get confirmation of your suspected diagnosis as fast as possible. Check the impressive bronchoscopy and CT videos at CMI. I love it that Philip always does these uh, videos in his papers wherever possible. It's fantastic and it's really, really instructive. And then, well, of course, what can be my last conclusion on that topic? It's time now, go and get your flu shot if you haven't already done so. And just one thing to do before you get your flu shot, like the video, ring the bell, and subscribe to the channel, please, and tell others if you like the video. Thank you very, very much. Bye.